Just like with the first team, one young player leaving isn't the end of the world because a young player is only full of promise and there is no guarantee that there'll be something more. I would be frustrated if John Clay Tadebo never suited up for the Blagrana again, but I wouldn't be heartbroken. The same goes for Ricky Puj, Ansu Fadi, or Ies Mariba. There is no guarantee that any of these players will be the next Gerard Piquet, Andres Iniesta, Jordi Alba, or Sergio Busquets. The concern is not when one doesn't get a chance, but when none get a chance. The same goes for La Masia, but the debate is a little more complicated. Hi, I'm Dan Hilton, and this is a Barcelona Podcast YouTube exclusive. According to his agent Carlos Barros, Juvenil A center back Javier Mboyamba is looking to leave Barcelona after just one season, most likely to Chelsea, but possibly Juventus, Inter Milan, or Real Madrid. Barros said that, quote, the ambiguity is enormous concerning Barcelona's long-term plan for the Dutch defender. He certainly has promise, but Ronald Araujo was in front of him, and Diego Almeida isn't too far behind. The hard line has often been that if a player wants to leave, they're free to leave, and there's no use in crying over spilled milk. It is a privilege to suit up for Barcelona at the Camp No, and those who aren't willing to fight for their chance are welcome to fight for it elsewhere. Letting teenage players and agents dictate the decisions that are made at the club isn't something that the club can allow. That's for certain. Losing Umpayamba from the fabled academy just one year after he was brought to Catalonia from the Netherlands isn't the worst thing. Where the issue comes is the same one with the first team. Losing young promising player after young promising player adds up to an exodus of talent that could derail the club's future. It wouldn't be just Umpayamba in the last few seasons. Just counting players still 20 years or younger, Barcelona have recently lost Pablo Moreno to Juventus, Robert Navarro to Monaco, now at Real Sociedad, Eric Garcia and Adrian Bernabe to Manchester City, Sergio Gomez and Monteo Mori to Borussia Dortmund, Xavi Simons to PSG, and that's just the players that are still rated highly by those clubs. Abra Ruiz, who went to Braga with Francisco Trincao set to come the other way, is still just 20 years old too. If these players had gone to smaller teams and washed out of La Masia, that's one thing. But most on this list had their heads turned by other clubs offering more money, with oftentimes the words for the public being that the other club offered a better sporting project, or plan, or whatever buzzword you want to use. Watching potential future first-teamers, and that's what this list consists of, go to other big clubs is only a bad look when it keeps happening. Eric Garcia is the one that may hurt the most. A captain for youth sides in the Masia, Barcelona-born Garcia left to play under Pep Guardiola in 2017 and made 11 appearances this season for the first team in Man City at center back. Here I am carrying on about Tadebo and Mboyamba, but some of the issues as the PK successor may have been solved if the club could have kept Garcia. What makes it worse? He shares an agent with Carlos Alenia and Arnaud Tanas, Barcelona's juvenile A goalkeeper. This agency also happens to include Carlos Puyol. This agency also represents Adrian Bernabe, an attacking midfielder who spent five years at La Masia. He only made six first-team appearances for Man City under Pep this season, but the former Barcelona manager has said that he has high hopes for the teenager. Bernabe still has a few midfielders to get past at City, just as he would have at Barca, but when it comes to midfielders, a position somehow more important at Barca than any other top club, the more the merrier with the hopes that one or two are the next big things. Maybe it is Alenia and Puj. Maybe it isn't. Sergio Gomes didn't necessarily light up the Segunda division with Huesca this season, on loan from Dortmund, but he's still just 19. Robert Navarro is only 18, but after leaving Barca for Monaco in 2018, before being bought by Real Sociedad in 2019, he would have expected to be on the door of a first team by now. Instead, he was playing in the third division this season, the same division as Barcelona B, where a number of 20-year-olds are still waiting for their shot. I guess it wasn't such a bad move after all. Again, losing an attacking midfielder isn't a big deal. Barcelona have Nico Gonzalez, Brian Pena, Jorge Alastui, and Chus Alba all around the same age range and all naturally attacking midfielders. There is just that little fear that the guys who left wind up being better than all those who stayed. Speaking of midfielders, because everyone will let me know if I don't mention him, Xavi Simons made the move to Paris with the advice of his agent Mino Riola, and the now 17-year-old is playing for PSG's U19 the equivalent of Barca's Juvenil A side. If he was still at Barca, he would most likely still be with the Juvenil Bays. It's obvious that PSG made promises, both financially and playing-wise, and this is definitely the prime example of the Barcelona brass doing the right thing, whether Simons becomes a superstar or not. 
which I would still like to see, even if it is for a Champions League opponent. We can talk for days about midfielders, but the last two to mention are two that left La Masia a little dry at two positions. With the Nelson Semedo rumors, we've been talking a lot about right backs this week, and Matteo Mori was shaping up to be the next big thing at the position before he went down with an injury and missed the entirety of the 2018-19 season. This career setback doomed contract renewal talks with Barcelona, as the club no longer valued him the same way they did pre-injury, when he looked like Spain's most promising right back in the youth ranks. He is still waiting for his Dortmund first team debut, but the 20-year-old was named to the bench for their 4-0 win over Schalke. The last name I want to painfully remind you of is Pablo Moreno, who could be the biggest loss in the end, but also has the toughest path to being a top player, simply due to his position as center forward. In 2018, before Alvaro Ruiz had his difficulties at Barcelona B, it looked like La Masia had a center forward pipeline going for the first time in a while. Behind Ruiz was Pablo Moreno, who scored over 200 goals in the academy. This unfortunately put him on the radar of other top clubs, and along came Juventus with 700,000 euros and a promise to move him from Barca's cadet A side, generally a U16 side, to the U19s. He has already had his ups and downs in the Primavera, but the 18-year-old reminded folks what a force he could be in the UEFA Youth League, where he was playing against kids still his age. I listed all those names not to say that Barcelona were wrong to part ways with any of them, because in some cases, like with Eric Garcia, I don't know how much power they actually had in keeping them. Sometimes a teenager gets a feeling, and a mind is made up. Heck, it even happens to adults too. It's why most transfers actually don't work out. It isn't as concerning when a player leaves for a much larger payday. Just look at what Barca were willing to shell out for Ansu Fati and Es Mariba, two players who the club has put their money where their mouth is for. They believe in those two, and they were compensated as such, and Fati was also rewarded with some playing time as a 17-year-old. Looks like the club got that one right, and let's hope his progress continues so I don't have to eat my words. I'll end this where I started it. It's not a major story that a 17-year-old center back is leaving La Masia after a year. Even if the hype train and YouTube videos tell you that he's going to be the next Virgil van Dijk. The major story is that another promising player on the verge of the first team is leaving the club, citing that there is no plan for him. If it's a reasonable plan that the player isn't willing to be patient with, that's one thing. But if there is no plan, there's the issue. Depending on when you're watching this video, we're nearing 1,000 subscribers. I've got a plan to help us get there. Hit that like down there, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell, and voila, more content like this. I hope you enjoyed the video today, and as always, until next time, Forza Barca!